Hey everybody, it's Joe Pro, and welcome back to Paper Mario Month. Today, we're gonna be doing another video here on the channel. I wanted to talk about my favorite game of all time, Paper Mario 64. Now, as you all know, the Thousand Year Door remake is coming out in just a couple very short weeks, and we are all very excited. And the Thousand Year Door is my second favorite video game of all time. However, it is beat by only one game, which is, of course, Paper Mario 64, the original, the OG, my favorite game of all time. So today, we're gonna be talking about 10 ways that, from my opinion, the first Paper Mario is not only better than The Thousand Year Door, but why it is the best Paper Mario game and the best Mario RPG of all time, and why it should be remade. Uh, maybe, hopefully, in a few years, it does get a chance at, at least a, an HD port, or maybe a full-on remake like The Thousand Year Door is receiving. So my thesis for this video is that the original Paper Mario game deserves a remake or a remaster as well. We'll kind of get back to that at the end, but first and foremost, we're going to talk about the 10 ways that it is the better game. So jumping right into it, these are in no particular order, it's just the order I thought of them as I was writing some notes for this non-scripted video. So the first one, and the one that most people talk about the most often, is that the first game does have better overworld level design. So by that I mean that overall the overworld as well as the dungeons really are, are much more open in Paper Mario 64. The Thousand Year Door has a lot of really linear hallways, uh, but the first game has a lot more dynamic environments. So specifically here, thinking about Dry Dry Desert, in the first game, thinking about uh, Cooper Brothers Fortress, the way it's laid out is very dynamic, a lot of really large rooms and areas, uh, going into, you know, even like Tubba Blubba's um, castle is a little bit bigger, kind of more spacious, Boo's Mansion, uh, you get out to Lava Lava Island, a great example, you know, huge network of rooms that are kind of laid out all over the place, whereas if you look at Keel Hall Key and the Thousand Year Door, you know, very similar uh, theme of the level, and it's also Chapter 5, but in Keel Hall Key, it's literally just a hallway. You kind of go from left to right throughout the entire area of the island, uh, whereas in Paper Mario, the first game, you are really branching out and, and discovering the level in a, a non-linear fashion. So, so I really like that. Think that is super cool, awesome thing about the first game. And uh, yeah, the, the dungeons and such as well and Thousand Year Door are laid out. They're very streamlined. You're kind of moving left to right or sometimes right to left. And, and there's a lot less branching paths and open areas. So I really think that the level design from the first game is far superior and probably the most important thing we're gonna be talking about today. But with that said, let's continue on to number two. Now this is one I'm really passionate about. The first game has a wonderful sense of exploration. All of the areas that you visit in each of the chapters feel really connected to one another. Most of them you you, uh, you you travel to by walking. You travel to on foot, right? So you can walk to chapter one, uh, which is, you know, Koopa Brothers Fortress. You walk and take a train out to the desert. You walk to Forever Forest, Boo's Mansion, etc. Uh, you take a, you know, a tuna out to, uh, to Chapter 5 on Lava Lava Island, uh, and so on. So the only instances where you're taking a pipe and you're, you're basically warping to the, uh, the destination is in Chapter 7 when you do that out to Shiver City. Every other chapter you're taking a natural form of transportation to get there. So I really like that. The only exceptions, of course, when you're going to Shy Guy's Toy Box, you just kind of jump in. And then when you go to uh, Flower Fields, uh, Chapter 6, you, you do kind of warp there. But at least it's, you know, it, it's decorated differently. You're going through a magical door instead of just doing a warp pipe. Now, compare that to the Thousand Year Door. And here, almost every chapter you get there by accessing a pipe. Uh, and it's just, it, I don't know, it, it seems like the world's very disconnected. You don't really understand where the locations are in proximity and relation to each other. So the only exceptions for Thousand Year Door where you do get there in a natural manner is when you take the blimp to Glitzville, you take the train to Poshley Heights, of course, and then you do take the boat out to the island. So there are natural ways besides pipes for you to get there, but there are literally no chapters that you can just walk to. Like outside of the Thousand Year Door, there's no chapter where you can just walk there, so you never really get to see how the world is laid out. And this is one that I'm, I'm really 
really passionate about that I, I love how the first game does. It's so cool and just not quite the same in the Thousand Year Door. All right, now this one's a small one. It's kind of a filler one. It's not a huge deal to me, but uh, personally in the Thousand Year Door, I'm not a huge fan of the badge stacking. You know, in that game, I mean, you can level yourself up to have so much health and FP and BP, there's no caps. And then there's a lot of badges, you know, you can get multiple. Um, and so that, that really, I don't know, it just makes you OP. And then I know you can, you know, just do challenge runs where you don't have badge power. You can't use badges and things like that. But if you're just playing the game casually, you can become so powerful because you can get so leveled up and you can have so many badges. And I, I really appreciate that in the first game, you know, while I don't really like the um, the caps on, on leveling up in, in the first game because that, that, you know, creates some restrictions on what you can do with challenge runs, I do like that, you know, there's only one of each badge and so you can't just become extraordinarily powerful. Uh, and I, I think that the first game is kind of more difficult because of that, like doing, you know, a challenge run in Thousand Year Door, you, like sure, you have more options. You can, you know, stand behind your partner and, and you can, you know, hit a bingo and, and all these different things that you can't do in the first game that really help and, and I appreciate those additions, but from a competitive, like, difficult challenge, I think that the first game is more difficult because there are less options and sneaky ways to, uh, to deal with things like that. So, I don't know, I kind of like that. This one's not a, this is probably the least important of the 10, but something worth mentioning. All right, now here's a big one. Uh, again, I think that the first game has better music. I mean, the, the second game, The Thousand Year Door, the tone of the music is wonderful. It really adds to the atmosphere. You know, think Rogue Port. Uh, that's, that's just fantastic. And the, the music towards the end of the game is wonderful. You have bangers like Duplice's theme and the Rock Hawk theme. You know, so I, I think it's a 10 out of 10 soundtrack. I just think that the first game soundtrack is slightly better because it is more cohesive. Everything in the soundtrack and the album sounds like it's from the same game, the same theme, it has the same, um, I don't know, the same sounds to it. Whereas in the Thousand Year Door, it's very diverse, which is great, but some of the tracks just don't even sound like they're from the same game as others. You know, you got like really techno tracks and then you have um, kind of more romanticized tracks and dramatic ones. And I don't know, um, I think that the boss themes are way better in the first game. Uh, Huff and Puff, Crystal King, the final Bowser, Koopa Brothers, Tubba Blubba, I mean those are all absolute bangers. But then you go to the Thousand Year Door and I mean there, there's some boss fights that are good that I mentioned a moment ago, but pretty much all the ones I didn't mention aren't that great. Uh, Macho Grub is really good, you know the final boss is good, but like the Sir Grotus fight, Lord Crump fight, um, all of the, the Lord Crump uh, robot fights, you know like they're, they're, not, they're not that great. Um, Smorg, not that great. Cortez is okay. I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I think the music is better in the first game. Uh, I just think it kind of fits it a little bit more. And then also that just the art style is better. I, I, I really prefer the storybook um, art style and the sprite-based designs of the first game over the more pop-up book style of The Thousand Year Door. Now the remake of TTYD does look amazing and, and completely gorgeous, but I still really think I like the first game's art style the most of all of them, and would love to see an HD version of that that maintains the sprite designs and the uh, the storybook uh, colorful aspect of it, but you know just refines those those textures and and uh, makes everything in high resolution. All right, that brings us to number five. This is another quick one here, but Star Spirits are better than Crystal Stars. Uh, this one kind of goes without uh, explaining any additionally, but long story short, Crystal Stars, they're inanimate objects. They're cool, they're pretty, you know, they, they do serve a purpose in the story as you get into the final chapter. Uh, but Star Spirits, I mean, they, they're characters, right? So like, you're, you have more motivation to save them because they're being held hostage, they're in danger, and they help Mario, and they talk to Mario, and they have personalities, and I really like that. And they each have unique designs, which is super cool, so definitely this is a, a really easy one for me. Star Spirits are far superior to the Crystal Stars. All right, we're halfway there. So the next one is Toad Town versus Rogue Port. Now, in my opinion, Toad Town is larger. Well, that's objective. It is larger, and it also has more to do in it than Rogue Port does. So Rogue Port is basically four small screens. Uh, I mean, you have the, the, the port, 
you have the town square, you have the east side where Frankly lives, and then you have the west side. Now, technically, there is the other screen, of course, with uh, the, the blimp and the excess express, and then you can go into all the different rooms and stuff, but in Paper Mario 64, each of the screens are much larger than Rogue Port is. Uh, Toad Town, each of the screens are huge, and there's more screens, and uh, to me, it just feels even more alive with characters everywhere. And it just seems like there's more to do. Um, I, I'm not gonna go into it completely, but I mean, there's so much to do. You have the dojo, you have uh, Mario and Luigi's house, you have the castle grounds area, um, you know, you still have the Port Harbor area, and uh, the little oinks game that you might not wanna mess with, but is always there for you if you have the itch to lose money at a bad uh, little area there. But that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know, I think that the Toad Town kinda Shows more progression throughout the game too. The characters' dialogue update more, and uh, and you kind of get changes to it, like the shy guys invading it, you know. Uh, whereas in Rogue Port, it's just like it's always the same. It's just the same people in the same locations doing the same thing. So definitely think Toad Town is better. All right, that brings us to number seven. I do think that the first game has more unique bosses, and I really like how they're all agents of Bowser as well. So to explain that further more unique, right? So a Thousand Year Door repeats bosses. Uh, chapter 2 and Chapter 7, you fight Lord Crump, and you also fight him, you know, a few other times in the game. And then, um, you know, it repeats Hooktail into uh, Gloomtail and Bonetail, and you fight Bowser a few times, and, uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. And then Smorg is just kind of generic. Um, so, yeah, some repeated bosses, some kind of copy-pasted bosses, and they're just not that unique. And then if you look at the first game, you have so many wonderfully created bosses that are so different from each other. I mean, you fight, like, I mean, yeah, a lot of them are kind of like Koopas and stuff, I suppose, but uh, just like super-powered Koopas. But I mean, you, you have Shy Guys and Lava Piranhas and, and Clouds and Crystal Kings and, and, and I don't know. It's just like, to me, yeah, they're all just kind of generic Mario enemies that are leveled up and stronger than normal, but they're, they're so cool and you don't really repeat any bosses other than Junior Troopa. But even more importantly here, I really like that they're all agents of Bowser. So they're all being employed by Bowser to protect the star spirits. And so it really makes everything feel personal and like you're building up to the climactic final battle with Bowser because you've you've blasted your way through his army and his legion of troopas. And in Thousand Year Door, like none of them are agents of, of the evil, right? So, I mean, you have the Shadow Sirens, which are, and then you have Lord Crump that is. But besides that, Everyone else is just like, they just happen to have a crystal star and they're they're protecting it, but they're not connected to the overall conflict. So Hooktail is not connected to what uh, Grotus and, and the Shadow Queen is doing. Rock Hawk, Macho Grubba, uh, or, or just Grubba, they're, they're not connected, you know, they're not associated with Sir Grotus and, and same with Dupless, right? Until later in the game. And Cortez and Smorg, like Smorg isn't hanging out with, uh, with the X-Knots, you know, um, scheming, so. I don't know. To me, that's that's actually one of the biggest ones here for me. I, I really like how the first game, it's all one evil that you have to team up with a bunch of partners to destroy, and I, I really like that. All right, almost time to wrap up here. Just a few more. Uh, I just think the first game is more charming. The story is more charming, and the animations are better. You know, Mario has so many really cute animations, you know, he's putting the fire flower on his feet and he's kind of wiping his feet and then he's got his like, depending on the food he eats, he, he puts his thumb up or he kind of like wipes his tongue, I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about if you played it. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I think that the first game has better animations. It's a more charming game, more charming story. Uh, Bowser's a better character in the first game than he is in Thousand Year Door and also Peach's segments are, are way more involved and, and more fun in my opinion. I really like going around the castle a lot more than just doing the hallway walking in, in uh, the x -Not Fortress. The castle is so much fun to explore and just feels a lot more tense as well when you're sneaking around. So I do think the remake of Thousand Year Door will fix some of this. Um, you know, all the extra animations they're adding to the characters, it will probably make it feel more charming and I, I think that they're really gonna flesh that part of it out. So I think that's gonna be great, but for now, definitely think that the first game is more charming due to the better Peach segments, the better animations, and just the better overall vibe. Number nine is kind of a, a fun one here and super quick. 
Uh, but the spin dash, <laughs> the, you know, the spin dash is great. Um, it's not a thousand year door, you gotta move slowly, but spin dashing in the first game is so much fun, so I don't need to elaborate any further because that's pretty much it. And last but not least, another one that everybody talks about, and that is the first game has much less backtracking. In fact, it has very little, almost completely none, whereas the Thousand Year Door is always maligned for having so much backtracking, which they are making a little bit better in the remake. But uh, to kind of elaborate a little bit more, Thousand Year Door Chapter 2, you're running back and forth the whole time. Chapter 4 in Twilight Town, you're running back and forth. Chapter 5 to me is the most obnoxious one on Keyhole Key, running back and forth, climbing the same area again to go help Bobbery. And then chapter seven, of course, you're having to do your General White stuff, which is always so much fun. And then in Paper Mario 64, on the other hand, it's extremely mild. There's basically no backtracking in the entire game, except for it within chapter six, Flower Fields, you are having to go back and forth, um, you know, a little bit, but if you kind of know the sequence of what you're doing, you really only have to double back one time. And then I, I guess you could argue that the Shy Guys toy box, you're, you're backtracking, but I don't even really count that one. You're, you're just backtracking to Toad Town to, to use your items, your key items to get other key items. And I mean, I don't know. That, that one, it's a, it's a lot more fun and creative because of the way they decorate the, the storyline of it all. Um, so I, I think that one, it only kind of half counts, but yeah, in general, very little backtracking in the first game and so much in the thousand year door. So you might be thinking, hey, Joe Pro, uh, yeah, these things are better in the first game, but the thousand year door does so many things way better than Paper Mario, which is it has a really great battle system with an audience and way more interaction in the, in the battles. And you might be thinking, well, the thousand year door is a post game with pit a hundred trials and trouble centers and you know, better story, better characters, the partners are more fleshed out, you get action commands from the beginning, whereas in the first game, you have to wait like an hour to get your action commands, and yeah, I mean, I agree. These are all completely valid accusations and counterpoints, and I agree with all of them, but I think that the detractors from uh, from the first game are, are less intense. Like, I, I'm fine with the trade-offs and, and really think it is the better overall game for me personally, but totally understand if you feel differently. So to loop back on my thesis here of the video, I do have a lot of reasons why the first game is better, and it's because of those reasons that I think it needs to get a proper remake, or at least a nice HD remaster uh, later down the line. And, and the reason why here is because with the Thousand Year Door remake, it can't really fix all of its shortcomings. Like, yeah, they're, they're making the backtracking better because you're gonna be able to warp between the chapters now, but, but the hallway designs of the levels and the backtracking within the levels, you know, going back and forth on, on Twilight Trail or going back and forth on Keyhole Key, these things aren't going to be adjusted by the remake. I mean, you can't. They're they're like they're they're tied to the game. They're they're rooted in its design philosophy, and you can't just fix that in a remake. Um, it's still a 10 out of 10 game. I love it to death. But but as we've already seen from the trailers, like that those elements, some of the backtracking in the chapters and and the hallway designs, and you know the crystal stars not being able to emote like the star spirits and. Um, the bosses being repeated and uh, not having spin dash and, and, and all these things. They're, they're rooted to the design. Those things aren't changing because there's not really much you can do to change them except, I guess, spin dash. You could technically add spin dash. So the Thousand Year Door is fixing a, a lot of things, which is great, but it can't really resolve its, its biggest detractors. However, the good news for Paper Mario 1 is that it can because it has the, the core stuff that it needs. The stuff that it doesn't have can be added in a remake, which is you could just add the battle system from the Thousand Year Door to it. You could just add an audience if you wanted, and you could add the better battle system. Um, you know, you could give action commands to the star spirits, and, and you can let your partner stand in front of you. Like, those are things that they can just add. You know, you can adjust those. You can't completely change the level design of 
you know, five of your eight chapters for a remake, but you can just add the updated battle system. The other things that the first game doesn't do as well, the post game, I mean, you can just make it where the game doesn't go to the credits and, and freeze forever. <laughs> I mean, you can just like literally change that. That's super easy. And then you can add in some post game content. You know, you could do a pit or some extra dojo challenges. I don't know, but that's easy to do. Um, action commands, you know, you could just get the lucky star a lot sooner before you fight the Goomba King or just do away with it and you have the lucky star from the beginning. So, so many options here. Um, basically, the point of this video is to say that in the first game, there are some minor issues, but all of them, all of them can be addressed in a remake. You know, you can even have the partners uh, come back out and talk again. You can add more dialogue for them. So they're not just, you know, introduced in their chapter and then you never hear from them again. Like, you can fix that because that's that's an issue. But it would be super easy to modernize the first game and make it a literally perfect game. Whereas the Thousand Year Door, even with all of the updates it is receiving, it's not gonna be perfect. You know, there's still gonna be those flaws there because they're really built into the foundation of that video game. And uh, yeah, I don't know. So that's the video. That's pretty much all I have. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think? Uh, which game is your favorite? Do you agree with any of this? Uh, do you think that the first game should get remade? And if so, let me know why. And with that said, make sure you subscribe, follow along. It is Paper Mario month and there will be plenty more videos to come. So that's all I have. Good talking to you all and see you later. Bye-bye.